Hello and welcome to yet another episode of Being Well, a show that strives to create consciousness and awareness in the world and wants to make a positive and meaningful contribution to humanity. Hi Manjali and I'll be your host. Achieving and maintaining health is an ongoing process which is scheduled or shaped by the evolution of the healthcare knowledge and practices as well as personalized or personal interventions known as lifestyle management. Today we have a whole bunch of health related segments for you. Firstly, we have Julie Shipman who suggests tapping for hypertension or high blood pressure. Then Alia from Cooking with Alia is going to show us how to make a delicious and healthy dish simple and easy. Later, Donnie is going to take us through a journey of yoga. And lastly, Welcome Trust is going to show us or is going to give us more explanation on Alzheimer's disease. So let's start our journey. Hypertension or high blood pressure is a condition that can lead to damaged organs such as kidney failure, heart failure, stroke or even heart attack. In this segment, EFT practitioner Julie Schiffman is going to teach us how to get a relief from hypertension through tapping. Let's have a look. Hi, I'm Julie Schiffman and today we're going to tap for high blood pressure, also known as hypertension. This is one of the leading reasons people take medication, as one out of four Americans suffer from hypertension. What many people don't realize is that there is a strong underlying emotional component to the way your body is speaking to you with high blood pressure. Now, of course, if we look at the physical reasons for hypertension, it occurs because the blood pressure in the arteries is elevated. These symptoms are very real and can be frustrating and even debilitating if you don't take care of yourself. It's very important that you address it because it could increase the risk of suffering from a stroke or heart attack in the future. With tapping today, we are going to address both the physical aspects of hypertension and the emotional components that may possibly be contributing factors. It never ceases to amaze me when someone comes to me for symptoms of hypertension. Sometimes I have asked the nurse practitioner in our office to take their, their blood pressure. We do a few rounds of tapping on various points and then take their blood pressure again. More often than not, we see the blood pressure drop considerably after tapping. Many people tell me they can feel when their blood pressure is high. They feel heated up or flushed, sometimes experiencing pressure in their chest or their head. What are the symptoms that you experience? Are you actually having symptoms that you can feel physically? Or do you only know that you are hypertensive because you get it checked periodically at the doctor's office? Some people have their own cuff at home and check it daily, or many people can check it at the local pharmacy. If you have a cup at home, you can try this before tapping. Check your blood pressure and write down the number. When you're done tapping, go back and check it again. Chances are you will see a significant change. It might not be permanent yet, but it's important for you to recognize that when your body and your mind are relaxed, your body will respond and you will feel calm. So let's begin. As always in these videos, I can only address the issue generally. Every person is different with your own unique experiences, backgrounds, emotions, and symptoms. This video is provided simply to help you to get started and to recognize that healing has to start from the inside out. You have to look at what is going on inside, the emotions, which many people try to avoid at all costs because it can really feel like a challenge. Here we go. As always, please remember to take responsibility for your own emotional and physical well-being. The tapping is not a replacement for any medication, nor is it suggested that you go off of any meds without consulting with your doctor first. Let's start tapping. I'm going to start at the karate chop point on the side of the hand. Even though I have this hypertension, I love and accept myself. Even though my blood pressure can really get up there. And sometimes I can even feel it in my chest or my head. Sometimes I really feel heated up, especially when I'm feeling stressed. I love and accept that my body is speaking to me and I'm listening. Even though 
my blood pressure has been elevated above 120 over 80 and I need to take medication to stabilize it I love and accept myself anyway and we're gonna tap through the points this hypertension this hypertension my blood pressure is typically higher than 130 over 90 my doctor tells me it's too high the pressure in my arteries is elevated this high blood pressure my body is speaking to me I wonder what it's trying to say it is true that it tends to be higher when I'm stressed and I do get stressed out pretty easily there's just so much going on in my life it can be so overwhelming and I don't always know how to calm myself down it might be work-related stress family stress financial stress or relationships it's coming at me from all angles all this pressure all this pressure it feels like it's all on me all the time it's too much this pressure in my chest in my heart in my head letting go it's okay to just take a breath and just let go this is time for me to relax relaxing all of my muscles and my joints just getting comfortable in my chair my blood pressure is starting to come down I can feel my whole body relaxing there is a part of me that really wants to resist this wants to move on to something else I have a lot to deal with right now I'm just gonna notice how I feel and allow myself to relax just noticing my blood pressure is coming down nicely as I relax my blood is flowing at a nice normal pace for my heart and my body it feels so good when I take time to relax I'm listening to my body letting go and relaxing the pressure in my body is lowered I'm feeling relaxed calmer peace take a nice big deep breath in and let it out <clears throat> and just notice how your body feels you're probably feeling much more relaxed at this point if not tap through it again really focus on the words and what you're saying and allowing yourself to just calm and feel relaxed if you notice that something is coming up for you just notice it and tap through it this next tapping sequence will focus more on the emotional aspect think about the things in your life which are creating stress for you you might have thought about that in our last round this could be current stress or you might think about something really big that might have happened around the time you were diagnosed with high blood pressure perhaps you lost someone close to you or had significant financial strain maybe you've been overloaded at work with a difficult boss these are just some suggestions of course but if you have a feeling you know the source of pressure in your life now or in the past something that has been unresolved this is a great place to start so we're gonna tap again on the side of your hand even though I have all this pressure in my arteries and in my heart just like the pressure in my life and I'm really feeling overwhelmed I love and accept myself even though 
my body is really speaking to me with high blood pressure. And at times I can really feel this pressure in my body. I love and accept myself. Even though it's been hard to love and accept myself with all the pressure I put on me. Because I feel like I have to solve it all. I accept how I feel about this right now. And we're going to tap through the points. My body is speaking to me with high blood pressure. This hypertension. When I feel stressed, I can actually feel it rising. I have so much going on. Maybe I need to feel stressed. At least I feel like I'm doing something about it. If I didn't stress about it, then I might be too relaxed and I won't be able to fix the problem. Or it feels so out of my control that I have to stress about it in order to control it. I wonder if that really makes sense for me. How is it really benefiting me to be so stressed out? I just don't know how to control the stress. Sometimes it just feels like I'm in the eye of the storm and I can just feel the pressure building. I wonder if I can step back from it Recognize that there are some things that I can't control in my life as much as I would like to. Why do I have to take it all on myself? If I could only solve this all on my own, then I would feel better. Then everything would be okay. But in the process, I'm killing myself here. I'm taking on everything. All this pressure, it's too much. And my body is telling me that I had better slow down and let some of it go. My health is depending on it. I wonder if I can let go. Somehow it all seems to work out, doesn't it? It would be nice if I could control other people's actions. But I know I can't. And their inability to do what I want them to do is beginning to really affect my health. Is that worth it? I don't really want to suffer because of other people's choices. I know I need to listen and let go. My body is relaxing. Maybe it can be okay to relinquish control and let go. I am choosing good health. My heart is flowing with love. My heart is pumping out joy and love. My body is listening to me. I am safe. I choose to be healthy. I choose joy. I am so grateful for the ability to let go of the past. I have faith in releasing the pressure. When I feel calm, I feel balanced, and I feel centered. Peace. Take another big deep breath in. Let it out. And see how that feels for you. Take notes as to what comes up for you throughout the tapping sequence, and continue tapping if needed. This is just a place to start. I suggest you tap multiple times per day. In the morning when you wake up, set the tone for feeling invigorated and balanced. Tap throughout the day if you start to feel stressed, just as we did here. It does not have to be this lengthy. Tap before you go to bed for all the things that you feel grateful for, 
even if it's just being grateful that your heart is beating and flowing with joy. If you need assistance, reach out for help. And as always, keep on tapping. So for a quick and easy relief, follow the techniques of tapping and lead a better life. Don't go anywhere, we'll be right back after a short break. Welcome back. A healthy eating plan gives your body all the nutrients it needs every day while staying within your daily calorie goal. And today, we have Alia from Cooking with Alia who's going to show us how to make avocado guacamole which is both delicious and healthy. Let's have a look. Hi, this is Alia and welcome back to my kitchen. One thing that I really loved in Mexico was guacamole. Um, I used to have it every day, especially when they make it fresh in front of you in the restaurants at your table. It's amazing. And since I've watched it every day be made, now I know how to make it myself and I'm going to show you how to make it. It's super easy. If you've never had it, please try this recipe. You're going to love it. And if you've had it, especially if you go to Mexican restaurants, then try making it yourself because it's super easy and super delicious when you make it at home. So let's start. The main ingredient in guacamole is of course avocados. So make sure you get a really good um, avocado. I use uh, Haas avocados, they're usually meatier and softer and they have a really good flavor. And also make sure that they're soft, right? So your avocado has to be soft. All you have to do is basically cut it in half. Then you can scoop the, the half without uh, the pit inside, just scoop it in your bowl using um, a spoon. And since it's a, a ripe avocado, you don't need much work. And then for the pit, you can just remove it easily and scoop the rest of the avocado. Using a fork, smash the avocado and depending on the consistency you're looking for, so if you want it soft, of course you smash it more. If you want it less soft with chunks in it, then you smash it less. So you do what you like. And so just smash it like this. We need to add acid, which is basically citrus in this recipe, to the avocado so it doesn't turn brown. So I'm using lime, and that's what they use in Mexico. Uh, push the lime like this on your table to make it juicier. And then cut it in half, and basically just squeeze it to get the juice. Add the lime juice to the avocado. If you like it really citrusy, you can use two limes if you want, but one should be fine. Also, if you don't have limes, you could use a lemon juice, but I really encourage you to use a lime. It really makes a difference. Now the finale. All we have to do is add the chopped tomatoes here, the finely chopped onion, and also if you don't want to use onions, you can use green onions. They're milder, so they have a mild taste, whatever you like, and of course the cilantro and mix all these ingredients together. You can also add uh, finely chopped jalapenos or any kind of hot pepper. Um, I'm not a big fan of jalapenos, so I'm going to skip it, but feel free to add it if you like it. To season, we're going to add black pepper and of course, salt. And finally, mix it. Serve the guacamole with corn chips and that's it. So I'll taste this for you. Yummy. You see? Mmm. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. I love this recipe. It's so simple. It has the flavors of the avocado and onions and tomatoes and it's clean flavors. It tastes a million times better than what you eat in the restaurant. And it's actually pretty healthy. So I hope you try it and let me know what you think. For the recipe, just check the about section underneath this video and also I would love to hear from you, so check out my Facebook. 
Bon appétit That looks both healthy and delicious. Try to make this wonderful treat today. Let's have a short break and we'll be right back. Welcome back. Being physically active helps us get a relief from all the depression, anxiety and stress within us. And so for this, today we have Doni with us who's going to take us through a long journey of yoga for cheerleaders, dancers and gymnasts. So go grab your yoga mat and let's do some yoga. Hi, I'm Donnie and today we're going to do a follow along stretch video. You can do this either before or after your dance class for those of you that are dancers out there. So just go ahead and favorite this video and like it and follow along a few times a week. Alright, so we're going to start in this crisscross position with my left leg over my right. We're just going to warm up our ankles and so take a few circles around a few times to the left just to get the blood circulating to make sure that we don't have any injuries. And go ahead and do some flexes and points to really get that ankle articulation going. So point, flex a few more times, flex and point, and go ahead and circulate the other way. So like roll your ankle inwards and outwards a few times. All right, and then we're gonna move to the other side. So right over left, go ahead and articulate or roll the ankle outwards a few times and take it into a flex and a point. You really get that blood flowing a few more times until you start to feel a little bit of a burn. Take it inwards a little bit, a few more articulations. Now we're gonna stretch all the way forward, so take your arms up and all the way down to the ground as far as you can. Take a deep breath in, and take it out. And one more breath in, and take it out. Just go ahead and walk your hands an inch forward if you can, two inches if you're feeling ambitious. And just go ahead and hold it there for a few more seconds. Breathe in. And breathe out. And one more breath in. Breathe out. Now we're gonna roll back up. And once you get to the top, go ahead and twist to the right. You might have a few pops going in your back. Then go ahead and move to the other side. And then we're gonna go back down to our first position all the way to the ground reach as far as you can. You should feel a really deep stretch in the crease of your right hip. And just hold it there a few more seconds. Inching up your hands as much as you can. And go ahead and roll back up to the top and now we're gonna do the other leg. So left over right, we're gonna take it all the way up, then all the way down. As far as you can go. And take a deep breath in and take a deep breath out and one more time in one more time out go ahead and inch up your hands as far as you can go and we're gonna roll up to the top and we're gonna take that twist to the left just hold it there and twist as much as you need now we're gonna take the other side And back to the center and we're gonna go all the way up to the top reach for the sky then all the way forward down to the ground take a deep breath in and take a deep breath out inch up those fingers take a deep breath in and take a deep breath out inching up as much as you can and roll back up the top now we're gonna go into butterfly position. So put the bottoms of your feet both together and kind of like in the other position, reach up to the sky and all the way in front of you. 
Just hold it there for a few hours seconds. And for a different stretch, if you feel more comfortable, go ahead and put your hands on your feet and push down on your knees with your elbows if you like this better. This might give you a deeper stretch just depending on your body. Go ahead and reach to the right side and push down your left knee. And hold it there for a few more seconds. And walk it to the other knee. Put it down to the ground as far as you can go. And this should be pretty helpful for opening up your hips. Then I'm gonna walk it back to the center and I'm gonna reach up again. And go all the way down to the ground. Try to go even farther this time. Just hold it there for a few more seconds. And we're gonna put down, push down the right knee again. Push down that knee as far as it goes. And your hips should slowly feel like they're opening up. Now go over to the left side, push down that knee. Hold it there a few more seconds. And up to the top. And then in our next position, I'm gonna turn my body to the left. And I and um, go ahead and rotate your shoulders and take your hands up to the sky, like the other two positions, and go all the way down in front of you. And you should feel a really deep stretch in your butt back here. Just hold it there for a few more seconds. And if this is, if you're feeling any knee pain, just be sure to keep yourself in an upright position to prevent that pain, and you can gear this more towards a front hip flexor stretch. I'm gonna go ahead and walk it back down. Hold it there for a few more seconds. crawl back up now I'm gonna go into a thigh stretch so go ahead and take your left arm and reach around to the back so you're grabbing your foot and you're pulling it towards your butt and hold it there for a few more seconds this is gonna be a pretty painful stretch in your right thigh hold it there for a few more seconds all right, and I'm gonna release my foot, and I'm gonna do the same thing that I started in. I'm gonna reach up and reach all the way down to the. Go ahead and continue to hold it there, taking deep breaths in and out. All right, and now I'm gonna rotate my hips back to the front into a half middle splits, and go ahead and reach your left arm. And take it all the way over to your right foot. And you're going to feel a stretch all along your arm and your shoulders right here. Keep reaching farther down for a deeper stretch. And then I'm going to take the other side. Go over to my left side. Hold it there for a few seconds. And then I'm gonna go frontwards now. So go ahead and take your arms up, down and reach for your front foot. And this is gonna target your hamstrings. Go ahead and flex your foot, and pull it back towards you, and then point. Flex it back one more time, and point. and reach back. Now I'm gonna turn my body into the right side. So go ahead and do that first position that I've done this way, in this direction, and reach up and go all the way down to the ground. Or if you're feeling any need discomfort, just go ahead and stay up in this position. I'm gonna go down now. And hold it there for a few more seconds. 
Just take deep breaths in and out. One more deep breath in and out. And crawl back up and I'm gonna take it up and go down one more time and walk it back up go ahead and reach for your left foot into the quad stretch and just pull it towards your butt or as far as you can go really really pull it as tight as you can Go ahead and let go of that leg. And we're gonna face to the front for our half middle split position. Go ahead and take your right arm and reach all the way to your left foot. And just go ahead and hold it there. Stay for a few more seconds. Now I'm gonna reach the other side. Hold it there for a few more seconds. And back up, and back to that left foot. And now we're gonna face our foot again. So go ahead and reach to the sky, down to the ground. Hamstring stretch. There, a few more seconds. All right, now we're gonna go into the pike stretch. So put both of your feet, or both of your legs right in front of you. And similar to all the other positions that we've been doing, just go ahead and reach up and reach forward. And that's this is gonna get a deeper stretch in your hamstrings. Don't be discouraged if you can't go all the way down. It's taken me multiple years to get this far. Start inching up your hands past your toes if you can. Just hold it there. Now I'm gonna flex my feet back towards my body. This is gonna target a little bit of a different muscle in my hamstrings. And I'm gonna point them again. And I'm gonna flex one more time. Point one more time. And flex. Thanks for following along with my video. I'll be introducing a series of new stretches in future videos, so be sure to subscribe to the Seggy Truth channel. That was a heavy workout indeed. So let's have a short break and be right back. Welcome back. In this next segment, we have a professor who elaborates on the history and the effects of the Alzheimer's disease and how to tackle it in the coming five years. Let's take a look at it. Alzheimer's disease is a degenerative disorder of the brain that occurs in mid to late adult life. It's characterized by the onset of progressive impairment of memory and the progressive impairment in the ability to do cognitive things like um, make change, do mathematics, um, plan what you're going to do over time, um, and engage in sort of complex conversations. And unlike things like cancer or heart attacks, there is no stopping this disease. It just goes on and on. There's nothing we can presently do to prevent the patient from dying from the disorder. It's also unfortunately uh, very prevalent. It's actually the fourth leading cause of death in westernized societies. Several hundred thousand uh, people in the UK, probably nearly 500,000 people, will have Alzheimer's disease. Uh, it's becoming and will become an increasingly massive problem uh, for public health. For a long time, uh, very little was known, um, although there are actually descriptions of this disease going back into Greek literature and probably before that. Um, 
However, in about 1907, uh, a pathologist by the name of Lois Alzheimer uh, identified the principal features of the disease, which was the death of neurons, the appearance of protein deposits inside the brain called amyloid plaques, and a, a different type of protein deposit inside uh, neurons themselves or nerve cells themselves called the neurofibrillary tangle. And that's where the disease, or our knowledge about the disease, stood for uh, another 50 or so years. And then in the last two or three decades, we've actually begun to know an increasingly large amount about the disease. So we know that some cases are genetic, and that some cases are probably environmental, and many cases probably actually are a mixture of both. We know that um, the accumulation of a small protein fragment called A-beta which is a component of the amyloid plaque, is poisonous and kills neurons. And we also know that the accumulation inside nerve cells of a different protein called tau, which is a component of the neurofibrillary tangle, is also poisonous. What we really don't know in great detail is which species of A-beta is the toxic species, and we don't know exactly how it kills neurons nor do we know the exact relationship between A-beta on the one hand and tau on the other. We know that they occur together. Uh, we think the A-beta is the initiator and tau is then perhaps an executioner. Um, but we, we don't actually know the precise details of the link between these two things. It's a very complicated uh, chemistry which we're going to try to solve. One of the problems with disorders of the brain uh, like Alzheimer's disease, is that once the nerve cells have died, uh, they're gone forever, they don't replace, and so you've got a permanently damaged brain. So what you'd like to be able to do is to detect the disease just as it's beginning, but before there's been serious damage that's resulted in the death of nerve cells. And then you'd like to be able to stop the process from happening. So our research is designed to actually identify the pathways that lead from the initial event to the ultimate death of neurons. And to be able then to use that knowledge of these complex pathways to develop a, a basically a diagnostic test or tests, which will allow you to pick up the disease just as it's beginning, just as the first biochemical traces of the disease are happening, but before necessarily any symptoms have occurred and definitely before there's been any death of nerve cells. You'd also like to take that information about that biochemical pathway and identify particular regions in that pathway where you could make a drug that would block the pathway. And if you can do both of those things, then you've actually got a very useful way of handling this disease. You can detect it early, and then you can prevent it from starting and from killing nerve cells. Now I'm sure you know more about the Alzheimer's disease and how we can tackle it in the next five years. So with that, we have come to the end of today's episode. Remember, follow your bliss, live your passion. Goodbye and be well.